one of the best things I ever did was have financial freedom. It allows me to live the life that I do, which is filled with happiness, choosing whatever I want and saying no to anyone who disrespects me. I can't say it on camera, but it's the f you factor. <laughs> Hey friends, welcome back to our channel. My name is Lena Lloyd. If you are new here, hi, hello, welcome. On this channel, we talk a lot about self-improvement and personal finances. So if you enjoy conversations like that, definitely subscribe and join the party. So today we're gonna be reacting to a video of how someone breaks down or spends their income. Now this is a series that Glamour has on their channel that I recently discovered and I've been in love with. They have so many different videos of people breaking down how they spend their income. And I thought that this was such a brilliant idea. I absolutely love the idea of people discussing how they spend their income and how they break it down. Because for some reason we've been taught and conditioned that speaking about income and personal finances is taboo. But I strongly believe that this is not the case. Speaking about personal finances is not a taboo subject because it's vital to our existence and it's vital to our quality of life. The more we speak about personal finances and budgeting and spending, and income, the less people will be suffering in silence in regards to how they spend their money because they'll have a little bit of insight on how other people spend their income. And so I love this series that Glamour has. I've watched about three of them already. I saw this one video and I was like, I need to do a reaction video. This would be a perfect video to react to because it is a 41 year old doctor she's a woman who makes 1.3 million dollars a year in income what love it love it love it and i love that it's 1.3 million in income because sometimes people will tell you i made x amount of dollars last year or x amount of dollars last month and although they did make that amount that is not their income that is not their takeaway because you have your revenue then you have your expenses so every cost you incurred in order to create that revenue needs to be subtracted in order to find out your profit and from that you'll be able to find out your income this is not an accounting video i just wanted to say that i love the fact that this is 1.3 million in income that is phenomenal i'm not really sure her situation how she makes her money um how she makes her income but i'm going to assume this is just an assumption that she has some sort of doctor business i don't really know what kind of hospital is giving 1.3 million in salary and if they are i would love to know how much is the ceo of the hospital making if the employees are making 1.3 million i don't know i don't know before we start this video drop a comment down below of a job title that you know of that pays roughly around a million dollars. I would love to know. And you can't say an entrepreneur. We're gonna dive in and I would love to know you guys' comments as we're going through this together. That's enough chitty chatter for me. I'm just really interested to see how she's spending up 1.3 million, 1.3 million dollars a year in income. I love it. Okay, let's get into it. I'm 41 years old, living in New Jersey. I work as a doctor and I make about $1.3 million a year through practicing medicine and other investments. I have about $6 million in savings, $1 million in 401k, $350,000 in a Roth IRA, and $4.6 million in other investment stocks and bonds. After Hold on a second because I just peeped that she said it's $1.3 million in salary and other investments, which would make sense. I wouldn't expect someone who makes close to 1.3 million a year to not have investment income, but I'm just wondering if there's a breakdown of like how much of that is salary and how much of that is investment income, but regardless, pretty bad A. I have to say bad A and not bad A eh, eh, because you know, your girl's not trying to get demonetized, you feel me, okay, <laughs> okay. After taxes, my take home is $75,833 a month. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. She is making 75K a month. That is phenomenal. She is making, that was my salary when I was working corporate. My one year salary as a financial analyst, she's making that in a month. In a month. Shout out to her. I'm just loving this, I'm sorry. I need to stop stopping every two seconds, but I'm just like, I love to see it. I love to see it. $2,600 a month goes to my mortgage. 
$600 on average on utilities and $300 on monthly subscriptions. This includes a gym membership and medical subscriptions. That leaves around $72,333 a month to spend. I have no credit card debt and $80,000 in student loans. I still have about $80,000 in student loans, and the reason I haven't paid it off is because it's at 1.25% interest, and my very intelligent financial planner said, why bother? I make more money investing that than I do having paid it off and not having that money as a lump sum in the investment portfolio. In order... I'm just gonna touch on that really quick because I think that is so brilliant and I'm gonna break that down in case someone didn't understand that. So basically, if the interest on your debt, so for her circumstance, the interest on her student loan is so low that she makes more money in investments, it makes better sense to put that lump sum of money into investments and have your money work for you and grow over time than it does to take that lump sum of money and just pay off debt and have zero. Let's say you have an investment opportunity or an investment account that usually yields about 3% a year, and then you have your student loan that is only 1%, then it makes more sense to put your money towards the investment opportunity than it does to just pay it off. And it's crazy, she makes $1.3 million a year and she still has student loans. And then there's people who make $40,000 a year and are killing themselves, busting their butt, trying to pay off their student loans. I'm just gonna go off and assume that her student loan debt was probably a lot higher when she first graduated and it's gradually going down, but very slowly. And that might contribute to how she was able to negotiate such a low interest rate on her student loans. But I believe that's something that people in the States are able to do and not necessarily Ontario. Well, I had OSAP. So OSAP did not allow you to negotiate your student loan interest. If you're considered low income, you can apply for their repayment program and they'll pay the interest for you. But that's only if you're considered low income. Otherwise, you can only negotiate the payment amount per month, but not the interest. However, if your loans are with a bank or a private lender, which a lot of American student loans are and a lot of Canadian student loans that aren't with OSAP are with the bank or private lenders, then you're able to kind of negotiate the interest rate, but if you have OSAP, you're not. That's only in Ontario, by the way. I don't know what other provinces have, but I know in Ontario we have OSAP. I love that she even shared this because a lot of people don't know what to do with their student loans, and there's so many different options of what you can do, how you can pay it back if you're interested in doing that, if it makes better sense to invest the money than it does to pay off lump sums of your student loan, because she's 41 and she has $80,000 in student loans but she has a huge investment portfolio, so. She has six million in savings. If she wanted to pay off that student loan debt, she could have, she really could have a long time ago, but her financial advisor advised against it. And I completely understand why. I completely agree with it as well. It makes 100% more sense to invest that money in higher interest investment opportunities than it does to put it towards student loan debt just so that you can have the satisfaction of looking at your portfolio and seeing, oh, I have $80,000 less debt. It makes more sense to say, oh, I have $100,000 in investments. You know what I mean? In order to be where I am today, I went through 12 years of schooling. I have a medically related business and then the money that I have saved up that had yielded investments are the result of my work. What I mm, okay, so she did say that she has a business. Hola, 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 hola. Did I catch that correctly or am I incorrect? I feel like she said that, wait, let me rewind right quick. Medically related business and then the money that I have saved up that had yielded investments are the result of my work. What I there we have it. She is a medical professional who is also an entrepreneur. So she kind of combined the both and being a specialized medical professional as well as being an entrepreneur you're bound to make a lot of banks so i love that and then she also has investments once again she didn't break down how much of that is from her business and how much of that is from investments so we're not too sure but it's okay it's okay either way it's 1.3 million dollars a year lovely what most about my job is that there is nothing more personal than being somebody's physician you can walk in a room and talk to them and meet them for the first time. And within a few minutes, they will tell you their deepest, darkest secrets. They will take their clothes off to let you examine them, and they trust you. And barely any other field in the world that you can do that with somebody and have that real connection with someone. 
the most expensive. Wait, I love how she's like, I love that they trust you and they go into the room and undress themselves. <laughs> okay. That doesn't sound creepy at all. Expensive thing I ever bought, and this may sound strange coming from somebody who is a vegetarian, was a chinchilla comforter after I had gotten divorced. It was probably about $75,000, but it was just something I... $75,000 for a comforter. A comforter. That comforter better wake up in the middle of the night to bring me water, rub my feet after a long day of work, massage my scalp after I take out my extensions. Like, wait, wait. $75,000 for a chinchilla comforter. Wow. I would love to know down below what is the most expensive thing that you ever spent your money on? Damn. $75,000. Damn. Okay. okay. First transactions for parking is fifteen dollars. That was a night we had gone out to go watch a show. I went with my girlfriends. There's nothing better than having some good girlfriends around. And then the United States Post Office, three dollars and sixty-six cents. I must have been mailing something that needed either certified mail, probably mailing my ex-husband some check for child support or something like that. I today pay my ex-husband child support because I make more money than he does. My child support payment are about $2,000 a month and they go towards paying for a babysitter when my daughter is at my ex-husband's home. Oh. I'm like, if you need a babysitter, why should she be there? Stupid idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh my gosh, she's hilarious. Okay, wait, hold on, hold on. Let's talk about this real quick. I feel like I keep stopping. I'm sorry, guys, but there's so much to dissect here. Okay. Basically, I feel like oftentimes we hear men constantly talking about be careful who you like, you know, be careful she's not a gold digger because, like, if you guys break up, you're gonna have to give her half. You know, Kanye's saying about it because when she leave, yo, she gonna leave with half. 18 years, 18 years. Y'all know the song, okay? So I feel like guys are constantly talking about like is she a gold digger is she after you for your money or for you but women come in close because we need to talk about this you need to be careful who you have a child with as well because i'm not saying that this happened in her circumstance but a lot of men are mesmerized by what it is that you can provide as well and you have to be equally as careful as some of these ball players and entrepreneurs are with their cash they're always trying to sift out who's a gold digger and who's not women y'all gotta be careful as well okay because some men are trying to secure the bag through you as well, okay? So let's just be mindful. Let's just call it what it is. Men are not the only one with assets that need to be protected. Us females got to do the same thing, okay? Let's carry on. The next transaction is for um, the Walnut Street Theater. I bought tickets to go watch a show there. I do not recall what show that is. I generally go to about 30 to 40 shows a year on on average, if not more. And the next charge on here is for $210, and that is for my board certification, um, the renewal for my board certification. If you don't know this, most doctors have to, every few years, go back and show that they are still learning and meeting certain standards to keep their medical license and ability to practice. Then spent at AliExpress, $12.79. That was for clothing. AliExpress, $34 for more clothes. AliExpress, $48 for more clothes. AliExpress, $55 for more clothes. AliExpress, for those of you who don't know, is part of Alibaba. <laughs> Can we say shout out to her for being a millionaire and having all these transactions for clothing at AliExpress? I stand. I stand. Living frugal, I, I stand. Baba, and it is an online shop um, store that is located in China. And then for insurance, homeowners insurance, I have them charge it to my credit card um, every month and that was $682. Amazon for $15, um, that was a wig I bought for Halloween. 
Amazon $10 that was for makeup for my Halloween costume. I usually do three or four costumes. Um, I I was a witch for one of them, so I came out of my costume for one day of the year to be my natural self. Um, and then I was a mermaid as well. Wellington Fragrance, that was for aromatherapy. That was $60. I love aromatherapy, whether it's lavender or lotus leaf or whatever it is. It just helps me relax. Um, I have it always going on in my room so that when I come in my room, it's associated with calmness. And then DH Gate, that is an online store um, that's in China. It was $168. One of the things I love to do is design dresses and then have their seamstresses um, sew it for me. And I wore that dress to an, a gala that I attended. The next transaction is at Wawa. For those of you who do not know, Wawa is the store to be at. It is a gas station with a mini mart and everything you can imagine, including coffee and snacks and groceries. You can do anything at Wawa. I spent $35 there for gas that day. And then I spent um, money for Spongebob the Musical, <laughs> $408, and that will be a gift for my daughter's birthday. Mm -hmm. She's eight years old. A Spongebob the Musical. I thought she was going to say she went to go see Spongebob. I was like, huh? She went to Spongebob the Musical at 41? <laughs> but that's super cute. It was for her daughter. But yo, live shows are so expensive, like live musicals. I went to Hamilton. That was like my first time going to a live show. And I don't know how much it was, but I know that it was pretty pricey because it was a gift to me. But I, I just, I just know that it was pricey. And I'm like, damn, I did not know that shows were this pricey. Like, that's crazy. But it was breaking the bank there. That's for two tickets. And then I purchased two tickets for Hamilton, which was on tour um, for $287. I have now watched him. By the way, this has nothing to do with this, but Hamilton was amazing. And I would recommend anyone who has the opportunity to go to go because I love, love, loved it. The soundtrack was on repeat at work for me for like the next month when I got back to work because I went to go see it in California. But when I got back to Toronto, the soundtrack was on repeat. I loved, loved, loved the musical. So yeah, anyone who has the opportunity to go should definitely go because it was a show to remember. Hamilton three times and every time I watch it I love it and I start crying at the same part each time mm -hmm. and some of you will find humor in the fact that Spongebob the musical is more expensive than Hamilton which is probably the really? most um, popular musical ever in the world <laughs> yeah I was looking at that I'm like Spongebob is $408 for children but Hamilton was an amazing show and that was like 287 that's crazy maybe her seats were better but then also like when things are marketed to children they're just so much more expensive like look at barbies barbies are expensive barbies are so expensive the next charge is for the um doctors for the fertility clinic and that's for three thousand one hundred and fifty dollars my best money spent i had decided to freeze my eggs for the potential of future fertility down the road because I do not have a ideal sperm to fertilize me. There's no there's no worthy sperm that I'm aware of. I'm sure they're out there, but not for me. Oh my God, she is so funny. I wonder who this woman is. Her humor is like dry but funny, but dry but funny. And I like it. <laughs> I think that's pretty dope that she's talking about that. This whole video is just giving me like the transparency is everything. She speaks on so many different topics, not only finances, but I love that she's discussing fertility. At 41, she's still open to the idea of having kids later on and I think specifically as women there's this like societal pressure of like when are you gonna have kids how many are you gonna have are they gonna be healthy will you be able to carry them to a full term like there's all these pressures put on a woman and a woman's body and a woman's expectations so I love that she's talking about this at 41 she's like I'm putting eggs aside because I'm open to having kids in the future 3150 is in my opinion for the option to carry life in the future, which is one of the greatest gifts in the world. I think that is incredible and definitely worth every single penny. She said it was her best purchase, so I think that's uh, amazing. Love that. I don't know if I'll ever use it or not, but I don't know, I won't have that chance down the road. NeimanMarcus.com, I am such an online shopper. I spent a thousand and 
$195 for a dress for a gala that I have to attend. And then another Neiman Marcus purchase for $1,000.95. I bought a gown for a gala that I had to attend. And this was for a different one than the other. Um, I was bigging her up for her AliExpress $20 dresses, and here she is getting $1,000 dresses for galas. Do you guys say gala gala? Gala gala, whatever. It's not her wedding, but you know what? She makes $1.3 million a year, so I mean, is it, I guess it's justified, but still, that's a lot of money. BCBG, you can probably find something like moderate, good quality, nice gown, real moderate, but like, damn. You know what, let me not speak. I shop at BCBG, I'm not no millionaire. So she got millionaire money, she could spend $1,000 on a gala dress, you feel me? <laughs> um, Neiman Marcus purchase. I generally attend probably about 10 or 15 galas a year mm -hmm. um, for various events, usually fundraisers and charitable events um, that um, throughout the area. NeimanMarcus.com, online shopping, $598 for a gown. It looked really good. Neiman Marcus, another charge for $695. That was for another gown that I had. I wasn't sure what I wanted to wear, so I... I'm literally so intrigued. I wonder what her closet looks like, because I feel like it looked like a boutique. I'm imagining nice chandeliers. I'm imagining an ottoman in the center. Nice, white, bright carpets, like mirrors everywhere. I just, mm, it sounds expensive in her closet. Look at all her gala dresses. Oh, 10 to 15 a year. Love it, love it. I'm always so begged to go to a gala. I'm always like, invite me to a gala, invite me to the ball. I wanna go to a ball, I wanna go to a gala. I ordered two. I probably have a, well over 100 gowns. I have three closets that are about 900 square feet. And that's probably one of the best things about being divorced. I don't have to share closet space. Amazon for $19. I had to cool. buy an underwater camera cover because I had gone to Mexico. Amazon for $10. And that was for a wide brim hat because of course sun protection is important. <laughs> Amazon for $211, those were for bikinis. Amazon for $13, and I believe that was for a bikini. Amazon for $8, that was for sunscreen. The Pennsylvania Ballet, $260. Then there is a hospital charge for $20, and that was a deductible I paid um, for my um, doctor's visit. Smug Mug online photos for $45. Um, after I go to Gila, I like to order the pictures that the photographers take. Um, makes it fun memories for me to look at. Terminix for $249. That is a pest control service that I pay for because it's year round. You have to make sure you don't have bugs in your home. And then there was another charge for Terminix for $89, and that was during the summer for the mosquito treatment. We don't want mosquitoes. I donated $100 to the American Cancer Society. Next is Amazon. I spent $394, and that was for a Lego set for my daughter. And some people may think it's a little funny to spend $400 on Legos, and it may be, but I like my daughter to do things that are learning that makes her use her mind so she's not just, um, you know, staring at some like screen all the time. I absolutely love that. But yes, Legos are so expensive. My nephew got one for Christmas and it was so expensive. But then this goes back to what I said about those SpongeBob tickets being so expensive. And then now Legos, $3.94. I don't know why, but these companies that market to kids, they're expensive and I just don't get it because they're children. But hey, the thing is that children are a recession-proof industry. Sounds crazy, it sucks, but it's the truth. People are more inclined to spend money on their kids than they are for themselves. Like if I'm out with my nephew and I'm like, I'm not trying to spend too much money, if he wants something, he gets it before I would even get something for myself. So people like spending on their kids. They don't mind spending on their kids. So kids I feel like are a recession-proof industry. It's wild and I think that sometimes these marketers and children companies kind of exploit that low key, but I mean, it's a business and don't hate the player at the game, right? Best Buy, $106. 
Ooh, but I forgot to mention that I love the fact that it was educational because Legos are really cool. Like you get to build something. You're working with your hands. You're actually utilizing your imagination and you're exercising your brain muscles. So I think that's pretty dope. Uh, my laptop had stopped working, so I needed to take it in so I can transfer the old information to the new laptop because I don't know how to do that on my own. And then Home Depot, $50, that was for paint for unauthorized drawings on the wall by my daughter <laughs> that had to be painted over. If I could give younger women advice, it would be to go to school and get your education. One of the best things I ever did was have financial freedom. It allows me to live the life that I do, which is filled with happiness, choosing whatever I want and saying no to anyone who disrespects me. I can't say it on camera, but it's the f you factor. <laughs> Oh my God, I love that. Absolutely love that. Super motivational, super inspirational to see a woman in her early 40s making $1.3 million a year. That's incredible. That's like about 15, 16 years away from where I am. So I love to see it. I love that she gave advice at the end of the video. For her, her piece of advice was go to school and get your education. And I couldn't agree more. The only thing is that I would say just get your education whichever medium you choose is totally up to you um, because not everyone's desired path is something that school can teach them for her she wanted to become a doctor that's definitely not something that you can learn through internships and through mentorship and through online education like you need to go to university for that you need to go to med school for that so that's incredible but she's also an entrepreneur and a lot of things that revolve around business you can teach yourself you can learn online and so I absolutely love that she said that get your education and then also you're able to build up she calls it her fu fund or the fu factor i call it my peace out fund so that any situation i'm in that doesn't serve me i can easily say peace out i'm out this no longer serves me and when you're educated and you make your own money and you have that financial freedom that you set up for yourself any situation that disrespects you and doesn't serve you you can easily just back out of you can easily say peace out to for her it's her fu factor but i love it i absolutely love it couldn't agree more and that was just super inspirational and motivational let me know what you guys thought about this breakdown of income let me know if you guys want me to do more of these kind of videos i would absolutely love to dissect different incomes and talk about how we spend money and things like that together let me know your thoughts down below in the comments i love you guys so much love you to the moon and back feature to you Mwah.